Baiju Bot, who also co-founded Robinhood. Uh, Baiju, this is fascinating. And you already have a very big first customer, the Department of Defense. That's right. First of all, thanks for having me on. Sure. And we're building this company called Aetherflux. The mission is to deliver energy to planet Earth. So we're starting out by building for these applications for the U.S. military, making the energy available in the battlefield and these contested environments much more resilient. And the way that we do it is by actually being able to build an energy grid in orbit where small portable ground stations can connect to them and collect power. Okay, that's what we're showing here. This is an animation. I need you to explain. So these look like very wide panels with a lot of solar panels on them. That's How right. big is this? Can you give me in feet? Yeah, so I actually think about it in terms of parking spots for cars. Okay, fair. So each one you can think of as like a half dozen or more parking spots, up to a dozen on each side. You can make the satellites bigger or smaller depending on which launch vehicle they're going in. But right now we're working on building the first version of these a demo mission, two actually, that go up next year. So we'll be launching on actually a SpaceX rocket and demonstrating the end-to-end -end capability with a much smaller satellite than, than that one. Okay, that was a big so, one. So it grabs solar energy yep. from the sun, mm -hmm. stores it where, and then how do lasers beam it back to terrestrial operations like, let's say, the battlefield, yeah. or even commercial applications too, eventually. See, this is the one of the parts that I think is actually the most interesting. So when we collect the solar power in space, it goes either directly into the lasers to come down to Earth, or it goes to batteries that wait until you've got a spot that you can project it down to. And the interesting thing is the lasers take the electrical power on the satellite and they turn it into a beam of light on the ground you actually use solar panels that are tuned for that one frequency of light that you're transmitting down to collect it. So it's kind of interesting. It's solar panels in space and then solar panels on the ground. But on the ground, you can make it 5, 10, 20 meters in size. And that's where the applications for the US military and getting these portable receivers out into the battlefield comes in. OK. That to me is so cool. It seems very groundbreaking and expensive. So you put in, as I understand it, about $10 million of your money. You've got a lot of venture capitalists, Andreessen Horowitz among them, uh, I believe Interlagos and Index Futures. Uh, but again, that equals about $60 million plus your 10. So give me a sense of how much more you're going to need to actually make this a living, breathing reality. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Space is expensive, and we will need more capital to actually build out this bigger vision that we have. The idea that we have is after we're able to demonstrate this capability, which I think kind of takes this idea from the realm of science fiction and makes it science reality, then we get into manufacturing. And we want to make these things in America. We want to take these next generation energy industries and actually vertically integrate them with American supply chains, American manufacturing, American workers, and that's where the big investment's going to come in. You're speaking Donald Trump's language right now. Uh, where would you manufacture these? TBD, TBD. Our office right now is in California, so we have a building with about 25 people, but as we get to manufacturing these things, it's going to take a lot of people. Probably a lot of space. Yeah, and, and money. Elon used to joke in the early days of SpaceX, want to know how to make $100 million in space? Start with $200 because you <laughs> lose a lot. You know, he's, he used to say that. I was like, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. Um, but let's talk about the commercial yeah. possibilities here. There are companies right now, I mean, we just had Voyager on, and the CEO had come on and spoken specifically about creating Starlab which would be up in space, sort of an international space station, but for commercial operations. I've talked to the people at Sierra Space out in Nevada, and they're making their own sort of you know, lab for working up in space. I mean, it's just fascinating, the possibilities. Could you possibly use your system to electrify theirs? Well, I think there's a possibility to do some stuff in space, but I think the part that's super interesting there is this rise in capitalism and commercial activity in space. And I think that's the super important part about this. I think that's also the part where America and our way of doing business has a chance to really push the leadership further in space. Because I fundamentally believe that in the next 10, 20 years, space is going to be a place where there's a lot of commercial activities. And we want to be the first ones to bring a lot of these markets to bear, energy being one. Well, there's Jeff Bezos, Sir Richard Branson, obviously Elon yeah. Musk, and so many of these other startups, and they've made 
quantum leaps when it comes to actually developing stuff, whereas it took the U.S. government many, many years to create the shuttle, which is now defunct. I mean, it's, it's fascinating to watch. Will you come back on before you launch this thing? At least the test version, right? Yeah, next totally. Year? And it's going to be, like I said, we're targeting next summer for the first launch. And hopefully we've got some exciting stuff to show after then. This is fascinating. Good luck to you, Baichu. Thank you very much for